Hi, Dr. Shawnee here, and welcome to FAQ Fridays, the book blog edition. And one of the most frequently asked questions that I'm asked is, what are you reading? What's on your nightstand? And, you know, I eat books for breakfast. <laughs> I mean, I just can, they go with me everywhere. If I'm in the car, if I'm, uh, there's always one in my, in my purse. There's always one in my, uh, if I'm at the hairdressers or wherever I go, uh, on the plane, you name it. I'm, I just devour them. And uh, uh, there's so much that can be learned. And so today I'm focusing on two books actually by the same author, uh, Norman Doidge. So here's, here's how it happened. I, I started reading them in reverse order. So as many of you know, my dad suffered a massive stroke uh, just about a little over a month, about um, eight weeks ago. And uh, the night before I flew to see him, I didn't know if he was alive or not, and I hopped on and got a one-way ticket to help him, and, and I ended up spending 12 hours a day, every day with him for a 35 days straight, and he had this miraculous recovery. But the night before I hopped on that plane, my oldest son, Ryan, had asked me for a book, and he asked if I had had it. So I checked out my extensive bookshelves, and I couldn't find the book he was looking for. But what I did find is this little number, this book here, The Brain's Way of Healing. And that's really unusual for me not to have read a book on my bookshelf. But this one, I hadn't. And it must have been one of those days when I bought a whole bunch, and then it got put up, and we've been doing some renovating, and somehow this little number got missed. And what's interesting is, it's called, by Norman Doidge, The Brain's Way of Healing, and I'll put a link uh, below. And it says, Remarkable Discoveries and Recoveries from the Frontiers of Neuroplasticity. And I think I bought the book originally because I'd heard about neuroplasticity, but also, but mainly from a, a business standpoint. And people had been talking about your income, for example, and a lot of other things in your life are set at a ceiling and you will do what you're expected to do. So if you earn 20,000 a year uh, or 100,000 a year, uh, that's your financial thermostat and you're set for that. And if you get a windfall in a lottery, if your mind is set at that level, uh, you're going to return to that. You're going to lose it all and you'll be right back where you came from. Or if you're set for a hundred grand and you have some troubles, something will happen so that you're back up to a uh, hundred grand or whatever the numbers may be. And I've seen that played out and I've seen people that, um, who have a financial thermostat high and if they lose everything, it's not long before they're back up and so on. So uh, I, think, I think that's why I had bought it because I'd heard the word neuroplasticity. I wanted to learn more about it. But the night before I hopped on that plane, I had a different uh, reason and the brain's way of healing and it's about rewiring the brain. And I hopped on that plane, I thought, oh, this is interesting, I'll grab that. And I knew the power of positive thinking, I knew the power of keeping your energy good. I often teach people, your job is to feel good. That is the most important thing and that can be hard. And it was really hard in those circumstances to focus on the positive. And my mom really set the stage in those early days. It was a horrendous experience uh, in emergency and they were told there's nothing that they could do for my dad. And it wasn't handled well at all. They had just handed my mom dentures and didn't tell you anything else. She didn't know if there was more of him left to come. Um, but in the midst of that, and she could have held grudges and different things like that, but what she did was she started writing a gratitude list. And uh, that really set the tone and changed everything. So uh, she started it and I continued it. So on the plane, I'm reading this book, The Brain's Way of Healing, and I'm getting more and more and more excited because what I've seen, it's like a, a miracle. It's amazing stuff uh, from these doctors and really on the frontiers of neuroplasticity. And there's no limit to what the body can do. And while we used to think the brain was fixed and in medical school, um, you know, I went through medical school over 25 years ago and we, we were taught really there's an area of the brain for speech, for vision, for language, all of these parts. And they're kind of fixed. And you drew the homunculus. And it's different. It's not really like that. Yes, there are areas that the brain has acquired 
and that's the function. But if you have a diminished function in one area, you can get another area of the brain and recruit it and rewire it. Um, amazing, amazing stuff. People who have been congenitally blind who were able to see. Um, and it really raised the question, do we see with our eyes or do we see with our brain? Fascinating stuff. So I read this book and this was actually the second book. He initially wrote this book, The Brain That Changes Itself, uh, Stories of Personal Triumph from the Frontiers of Brain Science. And it is really about rewiring the brain. So when I landed on that from the plane, all I wanted is to know that my dad had a pulse and I knew that I could work with anything else after that and the sky was the limit. And you know, as many of you know, he had this miraculous recovery and um, uh, was able to go home really at, in 35 days, which is incredible, and uh, walking in full function from what they said he wouldn't, wouldn't be able to do. But one of the things that we did right away before, usually you have to wait for a lot of physio and occupational therapy once they're medically stable. I started right away on day one rewiring that brain. So getting them to notice, can you feel this? Can you squeeze my hand? And really working on that strength before the body knows that it can't. One of the interesting studies that they did, and I feel bad for the monkeys, I mean, and he didn't do it. He's just reporting a number of studies from a number of doctors. Um, they had a monkey, and they severed the nerves for sensation. Uh, and this was years, years, years ago. And the monkey would stop using that arm because, you know, it couldn't feel, so it didn't use it. But if you actually took the good arm and contained it, containment therapy, and maybe put it in a sling with the oven mitt and some of the things that people have done, then the monkey could use this arm because it had to. Or if you severed the sensation to both arms, the monkey could use both arms because it had to, to survive. And so that's why it's so critical in those early days to not let the body and brain go to sleep. Like, let's get it to work and, and make it work. So I encourage you, if you have somebody in your, I mean, it's a fascinating reads, it's amazing. Um, it really shows that it's unlimited what the body can do. And uh, these are well dog-eared. But if you have somebody in your life that has Alzheimer's or MS or Parkinson's or strokes like my dad, or, um, or just, you know, a habit or chronic pain, um, fascinating read and so I highly recommend them extremely interesting Dr. Norman Deutsch the brain that changes itself and the brain's way of healing so that's today's book blog from Friday's FAQ we'll see you next week be good for you